Canine cats. Obama says, push me. Har, har, har. And I, I, I'm quite, I was quite taken with their uh, continued sort of perception that Obama is pushable. I think Obama, uh, you know, finds where he wants to go and then, now it's conceivable that, um, I mean, I think there is something to be said that we do not, we have not, you know, more people need to be doing this. I mean, I think we, when McKibben organized those people to get arrested in the summer in Washington uh, last year, it did at least make the Obama administration punt on Keystone. It may not, it may have just been a punt, but, and, and I guess we'll see. Um, And I wonder if De Christopher presumed more people, we would see more Tim De Christophers than we have seen. I mean, we have been through Occupy. We are seeing what's going on with the Tar Sands blockade people. They are doing this. Um, I think there's, you know, the stakes are different, obviously, when you're going into one of these federal, when you're messing with the federal government, then, as opposed to, like, trespassing in Texas. Um, I don't know. I wonder if to Christopher sees, you know, like, Aaron Swartz and, and, and those people as part of, I wonder if he now perceives his prosecution as being a harbinger. I wonder. Maybe we should get him on the show. We should. I was going to say, it's great to, it was great to talk about, you know, what Tim Christopher did. And then also bring up that that story about the gun march on the same show, because here you have someone who who these gun people would probably think is a you know a pussy, because he's a tree hugger or something like that. But he's willing to get arrested and go to jail for his beliefs and his what he what he believes in. That would be and these guys and these guys when they they say we're met with resistance, they turn around and run home instead of getting arrested for what they believe in. Right, right. I wonder. I imagine their perspective would be there should be no public land. All of that land should be owned by gas and oil companies, and they will protect it. On the theory that, I mean, what is the theory that you're protecting? Well, they're going to destroy it it's forever in terms of its. They want to protect their investment. Yeah, so but who better to protect your investment for the long But their These guys aren't the ones who have their the Their investment. investment is subterranean. Well, you guys are right. I agree. Their investment is subterranean. Absolutely. I'm just saying what they might say. Well, you're not doing a very good job in defending them. If you're an, uh, an <laughs> libertarian, <laughs> explain to me how um, how a fracking company, well, how they're going to be good stewards of the land. What do you think, though, ultimately, in a lot of libertarian... Mountaintop, wait, mountaintop removal. How well, is that Libertarian good arguments usually come down to, essentially, if you go through this line of questioning... It always goes down to global warming's a hoax. You, I mean, fundamentally, you cannot accept the science of environmental issues and be a libertarian. That's what I would say. You don't necessarily have to believe in global warming, though, to see that what these fracking companies are doing are just bad. No, 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 no but, I'm but, saying but, you but cannot yes. make the argument that a libertarian would make if you take any type of, ascent, again, any type of environmental science seriously, fundamentally. It doesn't work. Well, the, the, the dilemma there, and this would be a good question for libertarians. Here's a good question for libertarians. If you want to call in, you want to talk about uh, libertarianism to me, um, global warming. Is there a libertarian who believes that there is a very high likelihood that global warming is real, and that it is man-made, or man contributes, contributes enough to global warming that man could slow and mitigate its effects. I, I don't see how it is possible for them to believe in that and then maintain their belief that Government should not infringe upon the property rights or the economic uh, property rights, the economic rights of 
of those things that contribute to it. Uh, so if you're a libertarian, call into the program, 646-257-3920. 646-257-3920. I will be upfront in telling you right now that I think libertarianism is a bit of a joke. But, to be fair, I think it's a really dangerous one. So I will credit you with that. Um, uh, but happy to have the debate and give you the opportunity to convince our listeners and our viewers of the validity of libertarianism. But don't call up and say, well, yeah, I, I know that libertarians, every time they call up, every single one, to a man, because I don't know that we've ever had a woman libertarian We've call. had one or two. We had one or two. Okay. Woman. To a man or woman has called in and said, I'm the first real libertarian you've had on your program. All these other libertarians, they're not really libertarians. And then they all end up saying the same thing. And then they say almost the uh, exact same thing. 